I wrote this book because it was not there. It seemed to me that there was an incredible vacuum in scholarship, but also in the, in the, in the human history of this incredible elemental disease that was engulfing our lives, that is engulfing our lives today, engulfing our societies, has had a deep influence on our culture. And yet, if, if you know, there are 5,000 books on cancer, and yet there was not a single book which addressed uh, the, the history of this disease and its future to some extent in the way that I wanted it to be addressed. Well, it seems to you one has a particularly uh, uh, inflammatory situation in, in all of medicine, but in cancer um, in particular, between um, patients who are desperate and will try anything, right. and doctors who, with a sort of mixture of, of perhaps good and bad motives, you know, will also try anything. They, they, want, they want to help their patients. They're looking for medical glory, a yeah. uh, place in the history books. And, and this is a very dangerous combination because yes. it leads to excesses of the kind you describe both with radical surgery and with um, chemotherapy. Right. Don't you think this is, this is still in operation right now? And how do we control it and be sure that we're not putting the public and patients through un unnecessary harmful procedures? Cancer is a metaphorical disease in, in, a, in, a, in a very deep way. Uh, and we talked a little bit about it, the word cancer comes from crab. The reason is that Hippocrates thought that cancer, he, he thought that these tumors which were sitting under the skin with blood vessels around them reminded him of a crab, uh, of a crab crawling under the skin and its peculiar natural movement. The, the reason I bring this up, of course, is that the metaphor of war um, very quickly permeated uh, cancer. One of the things that I discovered in this book was, of course, that the very first chemotherapies came from war gases. And the reason was because uh, during the bombings of the of Bari, for instance, the Bari Harbor, uh, pathologists discovered that war gases um, were able to decimate the white blood cells uh, and leave the rest of the body uh, injured but not decimated. And, and therefore, there was a, the, the idea that if you could use that war gas in a slightly different manner, you could kill malignant white blood cells and so forth. That's just one example of how literally uh, chemotherapy and anti-cancer therapy grows out of metaphors of war. Now, these metaphors, of course, then become very much part of the consciousness of the doctor and the patient. It's not just one, it, it, both doctors and patients want to fight the battle, right? And in that moment of fighting the war on cancer, fighting, battling your own body, of course, it's very hard to say, well, now let's stop, let's retreat the front, uh, let's move backwards. Um, and, and therefore, this, 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 this dense idea, of this dense metaphorical idea of fighting cancer still permeates our culture. What is the mechanism by which we ever gain knowledge in medicine? The, the, the incredible irony in medicine, of course, is that it pretends to have certainty because every medical decision is about certainty. It is about telling someone, you know, let's do this and that because I expect this or that to occur. And yet, of course, it's a discipline fundamentally rooted in uncertainty. So every measure of progress furrows its way through the lives and bodies of patients. That's the, that's, that's, the, that's the sad story about medicine. And yet, of course, progress has to be made. This is a lovely line from Susan Sontag who says, um, my purpose was not to inflame imagination, uh, but rather to calm it. I felt if, if this book is successful, it will demystify one of the fundamental mysteries of illness that happens to be a part of our times. It, it will succeed if it is able to demystify something that's mysterious. And in that sense, it will calm the imagination because it's only by understanding that our imagination can get calmed. Thank you. Thank you.